In the last video, we set up this system of equations here in order to find out what the variables in our Gauss-Legendre quadrature would be. So, let's solve this system of equations. We can see here that w is going to be equal to 2 minus v. So that was a nice easy start. w is equal to 2 minus v. Now let's solve for v. Let's take this equation here. So 0 is equal to, now we can substitute in for w here, 2 minus v times x naught to the third plus v x1 to the third. And we want to multiply that out. So we get 2x naught to the third minus vx naught to the third plus vx1 to the third. Now since we're going to want to solve for v, then let's get these two guys on the same side of the equation and this one on the other side of the equation. So that gives us 2x naught to the third equals vx naught to the third minus vx1 to the third. Now we can factor out our v. x naught to the third minus x1 to the third. Now, in order to solve for v, I would love to divide through by x naught to the third minus x1 to the third, but of course that could be zero. But if you think about it, if that would be zero, then that would mean x0, or x0 would have to be equal to x1, which would mean I'm picking the same point twice, which would be pretty stupid. So I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm just going to promise myself x0 and x1 are not, under any circumstances, going to be the same. So let's divide through and we get the answer v is equal to 2x naught to the third divided by x naught to the third minus x1 to the third. Great, so now we have solved for w and for v. Let's go back to the equations. Let's take this one now, which basically has the same structure as this one, right? So we can use a lot of that structure from before, so we're basically just copying this here. 0 is equal to, we're going to substitute in the 2 minus v, right, for the w. Well, let's just write that out first. w x naught plus v x 1. And now we can start basically doing what we did here. We'll substitute in the 2 minus v for the w. 2 minus v times x naught plus v x1. We'll multiply that out again. 2x naught minus v x naught plus v x to the or x x1. So since we've already solved for v, it would be nice if we could factor that out and get that on a different side of the equation. So let's do that again. We'll have 2x not right that's here and then we'll put these on the other side of the equation equals v x naught minus v x one now we'll factor out this v like we wanted to do x naught minus x one okay so now we can sub this value in there which gives us two x naught to the third divided by x naught to the third minus x one to the third and that we can't forget that x naught minus x one now if we look closely here we can see that this factor here could also be factored out of here so let's do that leave the top unchanged and on the bottom 
we'll factor that out and say that is x naught minus x1 times x naught squared plus x naught x1 plus x1 squared. Right? And if you multiply this here out, you just get this here. So that means we can cross that out, that cancels, and now we see that we have 2x naught on both sides of the equation here. It would be great if I could divide through by x naught, although x naught could be 0. So let's let's go back to these equations and see if x naught could be 0. So let's assume x naught is 0 then that would mean this is 0. And in order for this equation to be true, then this would also have to be 0. So that would mean v x 1 also has to be 0. And if x naught is 0, then this is also 0, which means this could not be 0 because if it were then I couldn't get 2 thirds here. So that means basically that looking at this equation x null uh, x uh, not being 0 now I've written this in sort of a strange way x not being 0 would imply that v x1 squared is not 0. And so there's no way that v x1 could be 0 and this still hold true. right? v x1 cannot at the same time be zero and not be zero. So that's a contradiction. So we know that x naught cannot be zero. And by the same reasoning we could show that x one could not be zero. Okay, so we can divide through by two x naught and we would end up on this side of the equation with a one and on the, this side, only the x naught squared would remain, and we would have that there at the bottom that remains unchanged. So now, basically, we just need to multiply through and simplify. So mul we'll multiply both sides by the denominator here. We get x naught squared plus x naught x1 plus x1 squared is equal to this here, so x naught squared. Now we see right off the bat that we have the same thing on both sides. So we can subtract that out, which gives us this here, x naught x1 plus x1 squared equals 0. And now I'd like to divide through by x1 and we saw before that x1 cannot be equal to 0 so that's safe to do and if we do do that then we end up with x0 is equal to no x0 plus x1 is equal to 0 okay so that simplifies nicely x0 must be equal to negative x1 Okay, so we're just about home free. Now let's take the one equation that we haven't taken yet. With here, the one with the two thirds here, two thirds. Okay, that was this equation here. Two thirds is equal to w x naught squared plus v x one squared. Now, if we sub in for x null, uh, x naught we end up with w times negative x1 squared 
plus v x1 squared. And since this is an even exponent, this negative sign just disappears. So we end up with w x1 squared plus v x1 squared. Now we can just factor out the x1 squared and we get w plus v. But our very first equation was just w plus v is equal to 2, right? So we can sub that in there. x1 squared times 2. And now we have a 2 on both sides of the equation. We cross that out and we end up with 1 third equaling x1 squared, which means that x1 could be plus or minus 1 divided by the square root of 3. Let's say it's equal to the positive one. So x1 is equal to 1 over the square root of 3. And with what we just figured out, we see that x0 must be equal to negative 1 over the square root of 3. Okay, so we're getting close. We just need to figure out what w and v are, and we should be able to do that pretty quickly. Let's take this equation here. That was 0 equals wx0 plus vx1. So if we sub in these two values here, we get w negative 1 over the square root of 3 plus v times 1 over the square root of 3. Now if I multiply both sides of the equation through by the square root of 3, then I get 0 is equal to negative w and then plus v. So then we can see pretty easily w equals v. And since we also know that w plus v is equal to 2, then each of these must just be equal to 1. So w equals v equals 1. So now we've got the equations that we wanted. Or we've got the equations solved that we wanted, and we have the answers that we wanted. So before we had said that our function g, if we have the argument f, would be defined in this way, that's just some weight w times f of x naught plus another weight v times f of x1. Right? And now we've determined what those values are. Those values are 1. w was 1, right? So we don't even need to write that. f of x naught was just negative 1 over the square root of 3, so negative 1 over the square root of 3, plus, again, v was 1, so f of 1 over the square root of 3. And I'll just write that again here, and move that a little further down here. We can see that is exactly what we were wanting to know. We now know how to compute our function. If we're dealing with these monomials, at least, squared, so that's a 1 there, right? And x to the third, then all we have to do is know what f of negative 1 over the square root of 3 and f of 1 over the square root of 3 is. And we can get our integral like we wanted. So in the next video, we'll show how we can use this information that we've just won to estimate exactly, so exactly compute any polynomial up to degree 3 
and also to not only use this within the interval negative 1 to 1, but indeed with any arbitrary interval a, b.